Hi, everyone. Is everyone settling in? Um, my name is Jenny Mushkin Goldman, and I am delighted to introduce Chalice Fair. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. This is her solo show, Dread. And i um, just so excited to be talking to you today about tonight, about the show. And yeah, so everyone, thank you for coming. Um, can everyone hear us okay? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay, great. <laughs> so I first want to tell everybody that um, Chellis had her first solo museum show at the Myrtle Beach Art Museum in South Carolina. Um, the show was called Tethered, and that was primarily of works um, that were blue and white, evocative of the sea. Um, and I'd like to ask you, tell us um, about the title of this show, The Touch of Red, and tell us about the title and what inspired you to make a series all in this fiery color. Thank you, Jenny. Yes, yeah, so as some of you may know, my favorite color is red, and it's my signature lipstick. And I've always wanted to do a show inspired by the color. Red has such a complex history and um, expresses such a wide range of emotions. And I love how versatile it is. And my work has a lot of versatility to it in the way that I drape and twist and expand on the world of fabric and textiles. So um, when I was first thinking about this show, Ben Hartley, the director of the National Arts Club, had recently given me a tour of the spaces down here. And I just fell in love with the way that this room in particular felt almost like the core of the building because we're very centrally located and there's not a lot of windows in the gallery itself. So it feels very intimate and warm. And so I felt like it would be the, such a great way to present a collection of work in red. And I was also really touched by the application of applying lipstick daily. And you know, during COVID, we couldn't see a lot of our lips. So it was exciting to be able to share that um, in this exhibition. So thank you everyone for coming. Oh great, there's more people trickling in. Hello everyone. There's a couple seats up here. That brings me, you know, to my next question about um, your background in fashion, which you know definitely has links to the beauty industry and lipstick, and um, also your background in dance. How has that influenced um, your body, of, uh, the, your work in general, in this body of work? So I've danced all my life, and I still take ballet in the city quite frequently. And I really look to the dance studio as my sketchbook, because dancing is sketching in space and drawing in space. So I take a lot of the shapes that you see in my work um, from different dance steps or gestures. So especially the works directly behind us. Um, the one behind Jenny is titled Betty Boop, and the one behind me is titled Smile. So um, I feel that you can probably imagine a little bit of dancing I was doing in the studio to create um, these textural works. And you can see so much movement in all the work, you know, whether it's like jutting out or it's something that's like beneath the surface. It's really um, so beautiful. And, but uh, your work has now, you've expanded upon your practice um, because this is quite different than kind of your signature, very textile based work. Um, so uh, what led you to expand? To, di to different mediums, like such as the casting. And, and... Yes, yeah, so um, red is a very bold color. And so as I began to create these works, I started thinking that some of my previous works that some of you may be familiar with are a little bit more detailed and like smaller in scale um, and have a more, more of a woven um, textured surface. I wanted to be a bit more bold in my gestures in response to the color and to create shapes that are larger and can expand um, a stronger and more bold gesture. So that's what led me to um, also partner with a foundry and start to create works that are hard. 
What was it like to work with the Foundry for the first time? It was kind of like dating. <laughs> I was <laughs> trying to, it was the first time I was, you know, entrusting someone else to help me execute my vision. And I just had, took a lot of meetings in the city with different foundries until I found someone that I felt like could really help me bring my vision alive. And so like for instance, um, the work you see on the middle wall here that's red with a little bit of gold leaf from Florence, Italy, that is a cast and plaster. And the same work is featured on the wall in the, the back corner with the text um, in bonded aluminum. And it's also featured on this wall here in plaster. And the way I uh, worked with the foundry is I made a fabric piece um, and mounted it to a, a birch panel and then I took it to them and they poured rubber over it until we made a really strong mold. And then from there they were able to um, pour these different materials for me. It must be very exciting to work with multiples because, but at the same time, these don't, they're unique works. So it's, you're starting from the same, the same form, but giving it entirely different meaning with the paint that you apply and everything. And, um, you know, with the foundry, I would imagine that you could explore working in much larger scale or, you know, expanding the scale or, um, you know, kind of the sky's the limit. Yes, say. yeah, definitely. I would love to work bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> for sure. Um, and working with the Foundry was really exciting and um, it was wonderful to also, like this one to my left is resin and the same pieces feature to the right in acrylic um, with the plaster base. And I think it's so interesting to be able to take the same composition and offer a really different um, facets of it, similar to red itself, um, as I described earlier. These works are titled Flirt, um, also inspired by lipstick. Your titles are, are really, they, they bring a lot of joy. I, you know, there's such positivity in your work. And it makes me think of, um, I know, I can see a lot of familiar faces from the opening last week, and it, it was such a well-attended and joyous event. And I just want to hear your thoughts about the way that art can bring people together. Yes, well, I think, um, especially post-pandemic, we are all like seeking community and relationships, and what a great way to do this through art. and. Um, being able to be in a space like the National Arts Club that has such a strong, rich community that welcomes all disciplines of art, from dance to theater, to writing, to music, to architecture, fashion. Um, it was so exciting for me to see all different forms come together and um, share red. Are you working on any other projects right now or have anything lined up in the future? Yes, so I have um, some work on display at another private club called Zero Bond downtown. And I'm working on a collaboration with a choreographer this summer that will also have a touch of red that I'm excited about. So those are the questions that we lined up, <laughs> but um, I'd love to open it up to questions from the audience. Um, anything that, any burning questions, um, fiery red burning questions from anyone <laughs> <laughs> to tell us about her practice. Jim? Um, yeah, so I guess my question for you when I look at your work, um, they're executed beautifully, by the way. Thank and, you. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And they're, they're so intense and they're so process oriented. I'm just curious um, what your vision for them is before you begin, or do you have it? Or are you going in and just playing with material and letting that um, conceptually develop as you're, as you're working through the process? Or do you have a concrete idea in your mind of a final result, and are you working toward that? And are you doing things other than just manipulating the material to, to get to that place? Are you making drawings? Are you, you know, how, how are they developing? Exactly okay, yes, that's a great question. Um, well, I would say it's a very organic process, and each piece um, 
basically tells me what the next piece is going to be. And, you know, I, for instance, the piece behind me, Smile, I fell in love with this corner, this whole side here, I got really excited about. And I really um, developed that corner from this piece titled Flirt. You can kind of see the evolution a little bit in the way I draped the fabric and accentuated some of the, the stretching and the pooling. Um, in terms of like an actual like drawing, it's it's very rare that I sit down and do like a like a spec um, study. or study. I would say that my dance practice and the drawing and space and what's in my body and the way that I move fabric and my relationship with fabric is. I was previously a fashion designer, and so I worked with a lot of fabric mills in Italy and Paris, and you know was exposed to a lot of different processes of fabric, how Hermes scarves are printed, how if you um, soak silk in a bath of water and then let it sit overnight, it has a really different breath than just using the silk right off the roll. So I would say a lot of that um, influences my decision making, for sure. Um, Lily. <laughs> I have two questions. Um, the first is, from, well, first of all, congrats on this beautiful show. Thank you. And so many feelings just um, taking the work in. Um, I'm so intrigued by the resin um, casts. So the, I'm just curious about the process. Um, and then uh, the second question, should I come? Shall I ask, I'll ask it then. The second question is, I always, it's funny because um, I have veered away from red. I have, um, you know, a mother that loves these kind of emerald greens and reds, and I always found it to be a very strong color. And your disposition is very, um, you know, understated and humble and um, gentle. Have you? I'm wondering if you found a conflict between uh, what red has come to symbolize in your own sort of um, character, your inner character. So I have two questions. Sure. Uh, yes, that's a great. Um... I love those connections. So uh, starting with the resin, I you know, work with soft materials, fabric. And my solo show at the Nevelson Chapel, there were a couple of works that I made there that I started to incorporate strips of aluminum. And I really loved the way that the soft and the hard kind of had this new interplay. And then I thought, you know, why not just make the whole piece hard? And how would I do that if it was aluminum or resin or um, bronze? You know, so that's what sort of led me to. Um, that was one of the reasons why I experimented with the resin. And you know, resin can be very slick and shiny, like lipstick. And so I thought that this would be the perfect way to sort of have a nod to that without being too um, obvious. I would say. So that's um, the resin question. <laughs> <laughs> On to the harder one, right? <laughs> so um, just so I understand, you're asking, like my disposition is maybe a bit of a contrast yeah. to like the the very sort of storied history that Red even it's has. Contradictory yeah. to like <laughs> Red, especially like strong personalities and you know attention-seeking people that tend to wear red. But you're very understated and modest, and yeah. So I don't know if you ever yeah, feel that. Like, I don't know. You're still drawn to red. Yeah. I I love the color, and I think um, you know I I haven't always worn red lipstick. I think that happened later for me like in my late 20s i started experimenting with redder lipstick previously i had only worn it on stage as a ballerina um and then i just found it really interesting this um like daily ritual of applying the lipstick so when i began the study um the series lady danger i started kissing different pieces of paper with my lipstick and looking at the way that the lipstick moved and um that's what led me to make the the photograph in the in the back corner is actually an enlarged um, photograph of one of the mono prints of my lipstick on paper. So the reason why that wall is not red is because I wanted the viewer to really think about what red means for them before 
walking through the other aspects of the gallery and seeing what red um, I have experienced or what red I wanted to share and explore. I do agree that red can be very powerful and um, be very heated and um, loud. Um, and I think that I just find a lot of beauty in that space. And I think when there's an interesting sort of twist on things, um, there's, there's interesting balance and interplay that, that happens there. If I can chime in, um, I, I think that's a very, it's a question that I've been thinking about a lot, about what people gravitate towards, and if they gravitate towards things that are not exactly, you know, what their personality, um, uh, you know, what, what people might see them as. And I, I'm, I'm not speaking for you, I'm just speaking about the ruminations yeah, that I have about it is that, you know, I see red is perhaps like, you know, putting on red lipstick or putting on something that feels like fierce and powerful can be like what you're seeking, mm -hmm. you know, like if you are more polite and, you, you know, as, as Chelsea, a lot of, there are a lot of cellist friends and fans here. So I, I, I know that, but, uh, yeah. Um, but I know that I personally like, you know, gravitate towards certain things that make me feel empowered, you know, so it may not be my personality, but it brings that, that out in me. So, um, yeah, I, I would agree with thoughts. that. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, yeah, I mean, fashion definitely can be very empowering and expressive and uh, there's, there's so much there to, um, that ties into what you're describing. Freda? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times art imitates life. So in what way have you incorporated your own personal experiences into what we're seeing today? Because you have such a bold and beautiful personality and strength of character. And of course, you're now a mom. How does that like, become what we're seeing here today? Um. Well, I'll, I'll talk about the piece behind Jenny that's titled Betty Boop. So for me, um, Betty Boop is what I used to call my grandmother. And she was quite the steel magnolia um, being from the South. I'm originally from South Carolina, for those of you that may not know. Um, my grandmother had six children and never learned to drive always walked to the grocery store in high heels and um, wrote lots and lots of letters and um, was very diabetic but still ate chocolate all the time <laughs> and she just was very sweet and sassy all at once which for me is like what red is it can encompass the the danger -y, more fiery seductive sassy quality while also being very sweet and beautiful and almost like a rose um and also just you know in, in pop culture just thinking about betty boop i always think of her as wearing like a strapless red dress that's very circular and she's you know has short arms and is maybe a little naive but um there's something so fun about her character Yeah. Sorry. Um, how do you work on one piece at a time or across a series at a time? And how long does each piece take? Like, yeah. So the smaller works take for anywhere from two to six weeks, depending on the material and um, life, I guess. <laughs> um, this was actually the first show that I had to work on multiple things at once. I don't typically do that because I feel to give a piece my all, I really need to only be working on that one piece at a time and let that piece uh, lead to the next. But with the foundry relationship and timing, I had to sort of do a new choreography and a little bit of a tap dance. So I would say that the resin works um, kind of came in early, but were a, a consistent tempo in my in my practice while working on some of the larger pieces. I have a question. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations on the show. Thank you. Yeah, my question is, um, 
you seem to get a lot of inspiration from from lipstick. So beyond the ritualistic nature of lipstick, what else does it uh, represent, or what other meaning does does lipstick carry to you? So the Lady Danger um, works are titled after my lipstick, Lady Danger by MAC Cosmetics. And I was thinking about how wearing that lipstick changes at different times of day. And so for instance, the piece directly behind you in the gold leaf frame, that I think of as like early morning lipstick, like the sun is rising and you first put it on and then you look on the opposite wall, Lady Danger 2 in the black mahogany frame, that is more of like a 2 a.m. dark red lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> You're revealing a little more about yourself, <laughs> <laughs> But this, this is my first show exploring lipstick and, um, and my favorite color, so I, I wanted to have a little bit of a, a tongue-in-cheek quality to the work while also there being a lot of um, intensity and gravity as, as some of my compositions tend to convey. I have a question now. I have a question that's like based on what you just said. Um, do, is this the, actually, I don't know, is this the first time you've had a show based on any one color and like, do you have a feeling that you might want to do a show based on another color at another time? Because I've seen like a lot of your works that are either like mostly all white or some really beautiful like black monochrome ones or like the blue and purple color story. So I'm wondering if um, if this was more of an idea about if the idea was first to do a show based on one color and then you picked it or if it was like red or and if you do like another color show. Yeah, I would love to do another color show. I mean, I think working around the theme of a color is a really interesting concept. I mean, we make so many different like decisions in life based on color, whether we're aware of it or not. Um, and I think, you know, one of my goals in this show was to really welcome people into thinking differently about red. And even the, the piece in aluminum um, called, a, called Serpentine, for me, that piece is not actually red, but it has so much warmth to it. And, you know, red lingers. And I feel like there's so many ways to discuss color in the, in the context of my work that I would absolutely love to explore. In the back. Um, hi. Uh, hi. So you, you just come off your recent solo museum show, and that show was quite extensive. Um, not only in the breadth of work, but in the types of mediums presented. Like, you can almost consider it a survey, if you will. This show being based solely on the color red, not only on, you know, its personal impact towards you, but also its general interpretation, you know, that one can have on the color in general, seems to speak a little more personally to you. And now, especially considering your responses to the two previous questions, do you see these paintings more as almost self-portraits in a sense? Because I feel like each one, whether it's absent of red, but still, you know, giving the the warmth, as you said, that red conveys to the very airy and joyous pieces just behind you, that encapsulates you as an artist. So I, I want are, are these self-portraits? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. I. Um, I'd have to say, I, I agree with you. I think especially as the, the series was evolving and the piece behind me smile, I um, couldn't help but think there's like a little bit of a self portraiture in that, in that work, especially. Yes, <laughs> great observation. <laughs> Yes. You got, you got me again. Um, so I was describing the show to someone recently, and they were asking, well, are they paintings? And I said, well, yeah, but also no. Like, they're, they're objects. Um, so how did you come to this amazing hybrid of mediums, right? And, and you sort of answered it before, your background in fashion and everything like that, but was that ever your intention? Were you ever earlier trying to get to a place where you were, you know, making an object that was combining painting and sculpture and all these different 
multimedia, you can't necessarily define them as painting. But I, so I see them as paintings, you know, they're, they're really hybrids. So is that ever an intention on your part or did that happen organically? Were you ever, you know, making yeah. traditional painting and it, and it evolved into this or, or traditional sculpture and it evolved into this? So how did those two come together to get, you know, formally what we're seeing yet? Yeah, so that happened very organically. Like I, um, while I was a designer, I had a really strong painting and drawing practice of my own on the side. Mm -hmm. And I was painting in a more traditional color field style. Okay. Um, I loved color and so I was just doing these big splashes of color and thinking about how layering paint on top of itself was sort of like weaving and sort of like draping the human body and fabric as I was doing in fashion with, with clothing design. And then at one point I was like, why am I buying this duck canvas that I'm supposed to buy at Blick because of whatever? And when I know so much about fabric and I have such a love for fabric and such an intimate relationship with fabric, what would happen if I literally just punch through the canvas and start making my own ingredients of what a painting is for me. Got it. When was that? That was about seven years ago. I encourage everyone who doesn't know Chellis's um, full body of work to look back at um, earlier works that are made out of fabric and, and it really gives the sense of the, the softness and um, how she, how her practice has evolved over time. Because you, it's fabric coated in wax. A lot of, a lot of your works. Right. Yes. Yeah, so to give I, it the bending, mm -hmm. the ability to bend. I was making. Um, at one point, I was really interested in in caustic. I basically left the fashion industry and was like, I'm just gonna go for it and. Um, started just I was like so I need to learn a new medium like I took a break from oil painting and acrylic painting I was like I should just try something new so I took some workshops at the Art Students League on encaustic and I'd always been fascinated by Jasper John's works because my grandmother used to play bridge with his mother at Edisto Beach and so I always had sort of this I like tied to encaustic um, and then I learned that you could also take encaustic and make it a print, and you could also do those prints on fabric. And then the wax actually gave the fabric more integrity and allowed me to manipulate and sculpt the fabric as I had um, previously. And then I just sort of, it just opened up a whole new window. So they're very much wall sculptures, because Jimmy, we were talking about, you know, that desire to, um, you know, give a category to art, but it, they're also very much paintings at the same time, so it's... Um, they, they speak to both incredibly, so, I mean, they're not, I mean, I see them as paintings, but they're, I mean, they are paintings, but they're not. It's amazing. It's like, they trick me. I look at art all the time. I'm like, it's a painting. It's not a painting. I don't know what <laughs> But that's a compliment. That's a compliment. Rose. Rose. Were you ever tempted um, on that note, like throughout the process to go just full 360 sculpture and like leave the wall? Yes, that has actually happened. I was like literally wrestling with a piece because it wouldn't stay on the wall and it kept falling off the wall. <laughs> and so I was like, damn it, <laughs> it wants to be in the room. <laughs> um, and I made it into a, a sculpture, it's in my studio, so. I, I would love to experiment with that. It's um, sculpture is incredible and also daunting because then you have to go all the way around all the time. Yeah. Um, I can't but, imagine seeing these in like a 360 form. Yeah, it would be really beautiful. Thank you. Maybe the next show. <laughs> <laughs> so related question: What makes you frame certain of your pieces in boxes and other not? And um, they're really organic pieces that stand on their own. And putting them in a frame, it's because so. What what makes you decide to do that on certain pieces and other not? Well, I mean, all of my works can stand without a frame or with a frame. Um, I the works that I chose to put in a frame. 
I felt like it would be, it would add almost like this own little house for the work. Um, so again, like the relationship I have with my foundry, I worked with a frame shop that I really trust and admire and, and know can help me execute the right kind of frame for, for the piece. So I, I work very closely with them to, um, to make each frame. Jealous. Hi. Beautiful oh, show. Thank you. Uh, I have a couple of questions. One is how do you how do you feel about the difference between the cast pieces and the non-cast pieces? Because I feel like uh, obviously the cast pieces they have a little bit more weight, but the other ones seem to be able to have more cracks and crevices, and maybe you can dive into them a little bit deeper. Um, and the other part of the question pertained to um, what the gentleman back there was saying about them being self-portraits. And I, you know, I hear everything you're saying about related to lipstick and fabric, but I also see a lot of muscle and sinew, which is sort of like the internal self-portrait. And if you could speak to that a little bit. And then the other thing is, um, it's all about red, but I see a lot of different reds. And if you could talk about how many different reds you're using, there's warm reds, cool reds, and maybe what pigments you're using. Oh, yes, yes. Um, so, sorry, the first question was about the foundry, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I think that sometimes my work has a bit of an internal or an external um, evolution. And like, for instance, the works behind Jenny and myself, um, I wanted those works to have a lot of air and breath and to have a bit more whimsy and um, playfulness and that sort of facet of red. So I knew that these would be executed by hand and not with the foundry because I didn't want them to have the same kind of gravity right. um, versus the, the works I chose to make with the foundry. I wanted them to have a very strong gravity on their own. Um, some of them don't weigh as much as they may look, but they they offer that kind of presence, which is what I was going for. Yeah. And then, sorry, the, the other question was about the paint, right? Or the, uh, the reds, different the, reds. Or the different reds. So um, I loved working with you <laughs> and helping me match my, um, red lipstick, which you can see is uh, on this wall here, is the brighter Lady Danger red um, that uh, we developed together in your store. So cadmium red. Cadmium red, yes, cadmium red light, um, which also has a little metal in it. So, yes, cadmium. Um, yeah, <laughs> it needs a lot of shaking before mixing. Yes, it does. A lot of dancing Metals and shaking. <laughs> Um, different okay. shades of red have completely different, you know, separate connotations to me. Like this work right here, that that's almost a cranberry, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That makes me feel like immediate thoughts of the holidays, cranberry sauce, warm, mm -hmm. you know, um, like warm associations, as opposed to the candy colored, and as opposed to the very sexy reds and mm -hmm. and whatnot. So, excellent question because. Red is not just red. No. There's so many different so shades. Many reds. Yeah, as with that, every color. Jealous. Is there anything you want to say about the addition of gold leaf? Yes. Because it's, it's a, a color. Gold is a color. And it's a, it was a yeah. blue. Um, I I felt like that piece um, just commanded that kind of shine, and. You know, sometimes you just have to let the work take you where it wants to go. And I have, I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of light in my studio. And so I love, um, it's southern facing light. I love that like dramatic 3 p.m. Hitchcock kind of dramatic lighting that happens in there. And I was like, how can I convey that when not everyone has that window? Um, and that's what led me to work with gold leaf. And I wanted to work with the best gold leaf. So I found the best supplier and looked at all the different golds. And this gold is called red gold. 
It's from Florence, Italy, and it's 23 karat with 1.5% copper in it that gives it that extra warmth. My commentary about this is that I can actually see um, a lot of different art historical movements in various works within the, this show because that work reminds me a lot of perhaps like medieval or Byzantine influence with the application of gold leaf. You know, there's there's something that harkens back to more ancient art or... Yeah, I think um, I also was given a, a beautiful tour of the galleries upstairs with Robert Yonner, mm -hmm. the curator here at the National Arts Club. And he walked me through um, the back, the, 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 most, the most further back area where you can eat in the, in the dining hall. And they have these beautiful wood panels that are carved out of fruit wood. And the edging on the fruit wood is all gold leaf. Mm -hmm. And this building you know, is, has been around for so many years. And the gold is still shining bright and beautiful as if it's never been touched. I think it was probably built in the Gilded Age. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, you know, moving to other works that you definitely like your interesting color field is um evident you know with the extreme with the very large work it's much more you know uh one solid piece and i'm just i'm, I'm now realizing just the um the various just trying to like getting into your mind a little bit and seeing how perhaps the influence of works that you've seen in the past and you know have come through in one body of work in one color but very subtly you know kind of pay homage to is that is that yeah, the case yeah, or am I just I, projecting no I I think that I definitely um am still deeply influenced by the color field movement and I mean I have I remember just falling in love with Barnett Newman's work at MoMA and um, I mean that giant red piece that they they have there in, in the same room as Nevelson and Rothko. Um, yeah, it's just, there's so much to absorb. I can, it's evident. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions from those in the back? on your exhibition is amazing, beyond my imagination. And I had a privilege to actually oversee Chalice development from one piece of art to like the own exhibition in New York, and it's like, it's unbelievable. So my question is, as a new inspiring artist, when you started seven years ago, and you merged two techniques, painting and the fabric, I'm sure it was not easy and you had maybe some critiques or something I don't know it's it's always hard to begin something and start uh, what helped you to keep moving and keep experimenting uh, maybe maybe a couple of words for new artists that would like to experiment and would like to as well show their own vision of um, I don't know, like in ourselves yeah, so that's a great question, Olga. Um, I see your daughter is here with you. Hi, <laughs> thank you for being here. Um, I think just the excitement of, of making a new discovery and, and learning that, oh, there's so much more to experiment with and try and just having a, a curiosity and to just keep going and pushing and um, not being afraid to make mistakes. and. Um, you learn from each piece. I mean, I've made tons of works that I've never shown that I still hold on to because I learn so much from each of them. And, you know, I even look at works that I made before this um, evolution of, of my process and think, oh, I, I see facets of what I'm doing now and that, and that's, you know, I'm still interested in the same things and it still keeps growing. Alex. <laughs> um, 
I feel like we didn't talk that much about the tension in the work, like the physical knotting and pulling, and I just wanted to like make note of how beautiful that is in the composition and like I just wanted to know about how you developed that because I've seen like a lot of nodding in your earlier works but these are more like pulling and um, I just wanted to know about your decisions about how and where to do that in the compositions and what it means to you. So I, I would say definitely um, is influenced by dance. I mean, I think that you can see a lot of the the stretching and the pulling and, and these kinds of like different gestures that one makes to reach or um, create a space or a feeling beyond um, the typical maybe uh, shapes. Yeah. just realized, are people in the back, can they hear the questions in the front? Okay, good. Realize that's a little late to be asking that. But I did notice a hand, though, in the back. Yes, yes? So what kind of fabric do you use? Do you have favorite, favorite you know, fabric to use, or just, yeah, we talk about your using fabric, but I, I was curious what kind of fabric um, so like the largest work in the room, which is titled Everlasting Red, that piece is like 90% cotton fabric, um, different types of cotton gauze. And it's not one piece of fabric, it's large strips of fabric that I then hand stitch together. Um, and then there's larger cotton ropes and piping behind that surface as well versus um, the lady danger in the gold leaf frame and in the black mahogany frame those are both silk so i would say cotton and silk um, are primarily what you see in, in this show anyone else yes you said you had another project at uh, Zero Bond, which was a members club. If you're not a member, are you still able to see the works? <laughs> great question. That's a great question. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Uh, please see me if you would like to view those works, and I will set up a, a walkthrough for you. But um, do it soon. <laughs> It's on view for a couple more weeks. So. Sorry, there was another question here. Or... No? Well, um, this was a wonderful talk. I don't know, Chelsea, is there anything that you wanted that hasn't been addressed that you would like to say to everybody about the work, about the process, about what what you feel about the show and this experience in general? Um, well, just thank, thank you for coming. I mean, this was really fun. I hope everyone got something new about Red for, for themselves to take home. <laughs> um, Speaking of taking home, the works are for sale. So please, um, you know, See Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> Reach out. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you.